yo, what's good? What's poppin'? What's happening with you all? It's your boy Gold Phoenix in the flesh. Rise from the ashes and be blessed. You already know the deal. Listen up. I'm sitting here at Arizona right now, about 500 miles from my delivery. It's doing like two days. It's a little, it had a boatload of time on it. But I'm probably not gonna deliver it. I don't know. There's a drop yard on the way into um, California, so I'll probably just end up dropping it there tomorrow since it's like 200, like 280 miles. It's in Fontana, so I mean, y'all familiar with Fontana. I'm, I'm sure you guys have been there plenty of times if you run the road no real. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk a little bit about this truck as a severe thunderstorm is coming. I just got the truck washed and now there's dust blowing at it. This is why we can't have nice things. But anyway, that's beside the point, right? I have on this truck 17, a little over 17,000 miles. It's like 17,208.5 exactly, all right? Storm, whatever. 17,208.5, right? In that 17,000 miles, my truck has been to the dealership one time. Now, it wasn't for anything like, you know, like repairs or like it didn't break down or anything like that. My truck got hit in Chillicothe, Ohio and it needed to be repaired. I decided to be petty and go to the shop and run this dude's insurance who drove for Western Express because he hit me and when I said something, he skirted off on me and I couldn't catch him because I was on foot, so. But I had videos and pictures and dash cam footage and all that other stuff, so. I ran his pockets, what are you gonna do? Probably took his job too, but he deserved it, whatever. I don't like cowards, I really don't, but um. I got my mirror fixed, the mirror cap replaced and painted and all that good stuff, right? So, um, and I got a software update done to like the dash and all that other stuff because I found out I had somewhat incomplete software. So they got all that sorted out. I also had this armrest installed. If you guys remember, that was one of the things I pointed out when I had originally got this truck. I got this armrest, accidentally forgot to order that one. Now my passenger seat still only has the left one and whoever's sitting over there, I just had to rest a right arm up on the ledge. That's cool because no one ever really sits in the passenger seat, so I'm not too concerned with that one, to be all like completely honest, I don't care. These seats are by a company called Gray Mag. You guys know how Peterbilt tends to have seats basically like from other companies you know like the sears atlas or sears AV or something like that sears is one of the companies gray mag is another one this is the gray mag gt 703 the passenger seat is a 702 the only difference between the two is that the passenger seat doesn't have adjustments for these side bolsters but they do have thigh extensions i can adjust the suspension in the seat i can adjust the rake which tilts the entire seat forward and backward of course you got recline and all that other stuff plus my driver's seat is heated and cooled as well i didn't order that option for the passenger seat because like i said no one ever really sits there that aside i love these seats they're extremely comfortable maybe it's just because i'm coming from those basic cloth joints that was in my international i always hated those seats and I was this close to replacing them. The only reason I didn't was because it was, in my mind, gonna be a short-term truck. I ended up having to extend the contract on it because I was waiting forever for this one to get in. So, but it was built in April, 2022. So, it left the, uh, the plant April 22. That's when it was complete. And then I had to go through all the other stuff, which is why I didn't get it until May. Either way, Happy I got it right. This truck, out of all of the ones I've driven so far, I drove a 2018 Peterbilt 579 mid-roof. Uh, it had the 10-speed Eaton Ultra Shift transmission. 
That transmission was absolute garbage. Absolute garbage. But it had the same specs. I, you know, somewhat identical, same wheelbase. I had the same horsepower, same freaking torque rating. All that stuff was the same. But that transmission, the, I, I genuinely hate the Ultra Shift. I really do. Um, what else? First truck I ever drove was a 2020 Freightliner Cascadia. Of course, you know, DD15, 400 horse, 1750 torque. You know, it was, it was a I. I didn't like the ride and that thing was pretty torturous. Um, I also drove a 2019 Freightliner, identical to the 2020. Um, I had a 2020 International LT, you guys know about that. I had that truck for the longest. Yeah, those are all the trucks I've driven so far, not counting this one. This is by far the most sophisticated vehicle. Not just the truck, the most sophisticated vehicle. I think I've ever driven, probably next to a Mercedes S-Class. That was pretty, pretty dead on nice. But this thing is literally like a, a Cadillac that pulls free. It rides smooth. It's extremely quiet. It has plenty of power. Um, now, of course, you get into the hill, like the mountains and stuff like that. You know, I, I can't pull mountains with the best of them. I'm not even gonna own, you know, I'm not gonna front like I can. This thing, I'm not gonna say it struggles in the mountains because it definitely pulls better than my last truck. But, <laughs> you know, if it had, I don't know, 308 gears, it would definitely pull better than, it, you know, what it currently has, but I'll get into that in a second. So, you know, for those of you guys who don't know, this truck is a Packard MX-13, a new generation one. Um, 455 horse, 1650 torque. Uh, the drive axle is a um, Peterbilt flex air, so it has the C-shaped leaf springs on it. It's actually pretty interesting. It's very smooth axle, I must say. This is a fully integrated truck. What does that mean? Packard driveline, Packard pretty much everything. Engine has the Packard Endurant transmission, 12 speed. It's made in partnership with Eaton, but it's Packard branded, so. You got the engine, the transmission, and then I have Packard axles as well. Yeah, can't talk. Packard axles as well. So everything is fully integrated. It all works together, and it works together very well. At least, it's, you know, as things stand. Now, I did have a little issue over the past couple of days where my check engine light came on, and I ran a system check on it, and it was saying it was something to do with the exhaust. That went away today. It just turned off. So I pretty sure it was a fluke i think it was just a sensor issue or something that just worked itself out or whatever um i'm expecting for i'm expecting for at least the first sixty thousand miles this truck will be in and out of the dealership i'll be impressed if it isn't also another thing that i was warned about was something my father told me because he's very familiar with packard motors he's had two of them so far he told me to expect the truck to burn oil for a little while until it kind of like breaks in. And he was right. I did notice that my oil level is lower, but it's not leaking. It was just at the dealership. They didn't see any leaks, so it is burning oil for whatever reason. I'm not entirely sure why they do that, but it does. I have four gallons of Shell Rotella T5 10W30, which is what Packard recommends, you know, the, um, the weight for the oil, that's what they recommend you use, 1030. So I got plenty of that, I'm not stressing it. It's not burning a lot, nor is it burning quickly. I just noticed the um, the level is lower. I also have Shell Rotella coolant in case I need it because it's what's recommended. I just think the oil is the best, the coolant is recommended. So I do everything that is pretty much recommended for me to do by Packard. Not only that, but I read the all, like the stack of manuals that came with this truck, I read everything. <laughs> Cause I'm kind of crazy, man. A lot of people are not gonna take the time to do that. I read everything and I follow it. The shutdown procedure, the warm up procedure, uh, how it varies in the winter time versus warmer months. I, I read and follow all of it, all of it. So, 
That's something I recommend you guys do. Like, take care of your trucks, know how to take care of it, and follow the recommendations by the manufacturer because it will probably last longer than if you just do your own thing. But that's beside the point. I'm thoroughly satisfied with this thing. I'm thoroughly satisfied. I'm very happy with this truck so far. It's so comfortable. I can sleep well in it. My body don't hurt when I shut down. It's just cool. Now, it'd be cool if DC's had a nice little massage function. That'd be nice. But they don't. The last, what they do have is art. This truck is a piece of art. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years I decide to buy this deck on thing. Like, I, I, I've thought about it. I have thought about it. But I probably won't. Not with the Packard motor. As impressed as I am with it, it's too much of a pain to, to for me to own and maintain. I would want a Cummins motor. But, you know, with that being said, the fuel economy is something I cannot argue with whatsoever over the past 17,000 miles I've driven this thing I pull weights you know 45,000 this load right now I'm on is 42,000 I've been all through California going through the Shastas Grants Pass you know what I'm saying I've been everywhere I've been all over the place in this 17,000 miles I have averaged 9.3 mpg running 65 miles an hour everywhere. 9.3. I've been trying to get this truck to, to stutter a little bit or something, you know, bring it down into the eight range, see if it'll do it. And I did one time, one load, I tracked three different loads because you can track up to 26 trips on this truck. So I tracked three separate loads and on one of those loads was 8.7. It was like 9 MPG for the first one, 8.7 the next, and then like 9.3 or something like that, whatever. So I added the three numbers up, divided it by three. The average came out to exactly nine. Packard, when they came out with this motor, was professing that you can get nine MPG pretty easily with this thing. They were touting that like, 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 they're just that confident. And you, you never believe what manufacturers say. They always talk about their products like it's the best thing on, on the world, and then you end up underwhelmed. But they did not lie. <laughs> they, they did not lie at all. 9.3. My company tracks my fuel costs. Do you guys know what my fuel costs have been since I had this truck? Y'all ain't even gonna believe this crap, but... I, it's this is my stuff, so I don't, you know, like believe it or not, my fuel costs have been zero point zero seven three. That's zero dollars and seven cents a mile is what this truck is costing me in fuel to run it. Seven cents. What can you say to that? This is why I don't stress having the most powerful truck or the coolest or, or anything like that because fuel economy in this industry is a huge thing. Now, I don't believe you should stress fuel as much as some people do because some people take it to a flat out extreme and I just don't think too much about it. I just, like I'm aware of it and I'm strategic, but at the same time, it's not the end of the world if I accidentally put in 10 gallons more than I'm into. I don't, I don't, I don't care, right? Seven cents a mile in fuel costs, bro, you like, you cannot tell me anything. There's nothing you can say to that. Now, of course, that is also taking into account the extremely good fuel discounts I get at this carrier some places people are paying like seven dollars a gallon and i'm still paying like high fours low fives which is still high but also the fuel surcharge that my customers pay offsets that anyway so i never end up paying more than 99 cents a gallon realistically but either way 
seven sins. This is an ideal over the road spec for a truck. I don't care what anybody says. And that's all I had to say about that. I don't feel like driving anymore, honestly. I'm gonna chill, watch some TV or whatever. And it's getting hot in here. As you can see, I'm starting to sweat. So I'm gonna turn my APU on and relax. As I always tell you guys, be happy, stay blessed. Do not be afraid to make drastic changes in your life. It might end up being the best decision you ever made. I'm Gold Phoenix.